Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the parish family of St. Peter Claver. As we gather together to celebrate the 29th Sunday in ordinary time, it is with deep gratitude that we turn our hearts and minds to God and give all our energy in prayer and worship as the body of Christ. In today's first reading, a prophet finds God's providential love and care in the circumstances that surround the prophet. In the second reading, Paul gives thanks to the profound faith exhibited in the lives of believers. In the gospel, Jesus avoids the Pharisees' attempt to entrap him. He teaches that what belongs to Caesar goes to Caesar, but what belongs to God goes to God. Today's mass is celebrated for Dr. Peter and Clementine Amato and John and Eleanor Costello. Please stand for our entrance. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Yahweh's people dance for joy, O oh, come before the Lord, and play for him on glad tambourines, and let your trumpet sound. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your My sisters and brothers, we gather together to give honor, glory, and praise to our God who walks this journey with us by our side in our hearts. As we begin this celebration of his unconditional love for us, let us allow the Lord to embrace us in that peace that only he can give. Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And now, with joy in our hearts, let us give all the glory to our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, 
subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Servanus, Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Alleluia. Shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now the Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to them with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. I die the king's good servant, but God's first. Many of us remember these words from the stage play, A Man for All Seasons, written by Robert Bolt. It was about, of course, the times of Sir Thomas More, former Chancellor of England. Historically, we know that More was called to support Henry VIII's desire to divorce his wife, Catherine of Aragon, so that he could remarry to Anne Boleyn in search of a male heir. Moore opposed this because it violated church law and divorce, and he stood on his conscience no matter what the consequences. But the story is more than this. The story is about how much loyalty can we give any nation, any ruler, any political party, and so on. If in any of those loyalties we should be in conflict with God, then we have to forsake those loyalties. The prophet Isaiah assists us in addressing this problem when he says, I am the Lord your God, there is no other. If that is the case, then why do so many in history give their ultimate allegiance to Caesar or some other idol? In biblical terms, the main problem for human history is idolatry. It flows all through the Old Testament, manifests in the New Testament, and has certainly been demonstrated throughout human history, giving one's allegiance to something other than the Lord, as if there were some kind of storm-free zones in the world where God was not interested. History informs us that the result of this, that when we forsake the Lord and turn to idols, war, persecution, injustice, and cruelty are always the result. And so often people will look for a charismatic leader to solve their problems when all along they themselves were the very people they were waiting for, whom God would work through to create the world that they longed to live in. So often human beings have turned to idols, forsaking the God of love for the gods of power, prestige, vanity, or simply vengeance. It is no wonder that history was once described by the great philosopher Hegel as the butcher's chopping block. Jesus is confronted by some who wanted to have an excuse to bring a charge against him to the Romans for the refusal to pay taxes which would have been interpreted, certainly by the Romans, as treasonous and subversive activity. And hence, they give them, uh, would give them, of course, reasons to arrest Jesus. But Jesus knows what these folks are up to. 
and he turns the table on them quite adroitly. He asks to see the coin that bears the head of a pagan god, the emperor of Rome. Why would a good Jew have a pagan idol in his or her pocket? So it's an embarrassment to those who tried to test him. But of course, we also know the real answer. When Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar and God what is God's, a good Jew would always know nothing belongs to Caesar at all. Everything comes from God, is held in being by God, and is completed in God. So Caesar is merely a renter, just like all of us. And then, of course, it drives home, where should my ultimate allegiance ally then? Some use this story to suggest that what belongs to God or Caesar in the New Testament is to justify surrendering my loyalty to someone or something other than God to embrace an idol and not the father of Jesus. Uh, this was made clear, certainly, in the middle of the 20th century when a number of nations fell prey to dictatorships. In Nazi Germany at the time, the Confessing Church published something called the Barman Declaration, where it challenged a division of loyalties. They put it this way, we reject the false doctrine that there could be areas of our life in which we would not belong to Jesus Christ, but to other lords, areas in which we would not need to be saved or sanctified through Jesus Christ. The Christian church is the community of the brethren in which the word and sacrament through the Holy Spirit, Jesus acts in the present as Lord and only the Lord. With both its faith and its obedience, with both message and its order, it has to testify in the midst of a sinful world as the church of pardoned sinners that belongs to him alone and lives and may live by his comfort under his direction alone in expectation of his return. We reject the false doctrine that the church could have permission to hand over the form of its message and of its order to whatever itself might wish or to the particular prevailing ideologies or political convictions of the day. In the end, then, nothing belongs to Caesar. Everything belongs to God. An essential understanding as Americans go to the poll this November. As people of faith, let us together profess what we all believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers to God, who hears the cry of the poor. That the church continue to preach the gospel with power and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the swift recovery of those suffering with the effects of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord look lovingly on Christopher Joseph Pilati, who will be baptized this weekend. May the lives of his mother and godparents be examples of faith to inspire them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly married, especially Christopher and Aubrey Darren, may they shine as witnesses to the love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way today. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we pray in a special way today for Dr. Peter Clementine Amato, Dr. Peter N. Clementine Amato, and John and Eleanor Costello. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have recently died, including Ruth Rossini, may they rest and rejoice in the peace, joy, and love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our book of hope, our prayer chain, and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All powerful God, everything we have comes from your hand. We return it all to you, asking only your mercy. Hear our prayer, for as always we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering canceled out our sins. And by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending, ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and his assistant Bishop, Juan Miguel, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of, us, of you who are worshiping with us from your home, I invite you to a spiritual communion. You could repeat these words after me, either out loud or to yourself, meaning every word, and if you'd like, you could place your hand over your heart. Jesus, 
I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my being. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come now spiritually into my heart. I embrace you with all my love and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. These are today's announcements. There will be a second collection for this weekend for World Mission Sunday. There is a collection basket as you exit the church. The Outreach Committee is sponsoring a drive through food collection next Sunday, October 25th, between, the 10, between 10.30 and 12 noon in the church parking lot. After seven months of the pandemic, many are unemployed and experiencing food insecurity for the first time. Here is our opportunity to feed the hungry as Jesus instructed. Please see the bulletin for suggested items to donate and the donations will be to benefit the town of West Hartford Food Pantry and Hands on Hartford.
awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light. conquered the night. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into We are sons of the morning, we are daughters of day, the one who has loved us has brightened our way. The Lord of all kindness has called us to be. set their hearts free. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into night into 